Hello there, folks. Yes, this is RJB from RJB TV, channel that you are watching right now. And we are gonna go and enjoy game number four between Mong, professional Terran player, against Burger Sasu, one of the best fast map players in the world. And for game number four, they're gonna be on Protoss for Mong and Terran for Burger Sasu. So far, Mong has played well, in my opinion. He's managed to get himself one win and two losses. But there has been a trend that I've been noticing in his play in this series so far, and that is a lot of the things he tries to do just don't exactly seem to play out as he had in mind. He's doing pretty much all the right things. Everything he's doing is more or less what he should be doing. But when push comes to shove, things just don't seem to go his way. Either Bird or Sasu is responding to everything, I would say perfectly, which he more or less is. He's kind of responding to everything perfectly. He's always a step ahead of his competition. Or maybe it's just pure luck. Or in Monk's case, pure bad luck that things just don't seem to be working out as he wants to. Hopefully for this game number four, we're going to be seeing a game that is slightly more lucky for Mong or where everything just goes as he wants it to. Only time will tell. Only time will tell where that's going to go. So Burgess has here on the triple barracks bolt order with, um, yeah, just a triple barracks. There's literally nothing else going on yet at the moment. He finished the first one, which means he went for barracks into supply depot, into two more barracks as a build order. Finds the probe through on the middle. Very early scout from both players, honestly. We have a double gateway there from Mong, which is pretty strong in keeping the Marines away from hitting that choke, which he will build after he does a little bit of, uh, I'd say harassment with the Zealots to buy himself some time to get the Nexus and the Assimilators up there in the back. Build order specifically is gateway, well, excuse me, allow me to correct myself. It's Pylon Gateway Gateway Pylon Nexus. But you get the Nexus after making two Zealots. And now moving out onto the map, ready to start the attack and hurt Burger Sasu a little bit more than Burger Sasu is comfortable with. Maybe he is comfortable with it, maybe he's a masochist, I don't know. I just know that if I were in his shoes, I would rather not be beaten up by Maw, or punched, or whatever. So the probe in the back is distracting the Marines in the front, which will allow these two Zealots to actually just walk right on in there and start, you know, doing exactly what I mentioned earlier, punching Burger Sasu, hopefully not in the face, but at least somewhere, at least somewhere. Probe went down, the Marines are sp back there at the... SCVs protecting SC Marine from Mong there in the base. We oh, quickly got to switch over to Burger's base. Zelda there on the bottom gets in. Zelda on the top goes in at the same time as the Marines pull away to start killing some of those SCVs there. They're trying to sneak away. One of them does go down. Might get number two as well. Oh, a couple of wrong inputs there from Mong. Kills an SCV on the bottom. So two SCV kills in total, I believe. Let's check the kill count on that one. I couldn't see it. This one is two, so maybe even three SCV kills in total. Maybe just two. Maybe just two. So command center number two and three on the way there from Burger Sasu. A little bit greedy, but it's a possibility he can do this. Because with the two gateway build order into a Nexus, the technology is a little bit slower than if you go for a forge before a gateway. It's a little bit slower, not much, but I'd say about 20 to 30 seconds in total. Ken is coming up in the front, Zell is still walking about in Burgess Hazard's base, getting hunted down by Marines, the Zealot on the top again getting some kills, it's the exact same playbook, he's tracked with the Zealot on the bottom, and hopefully gets some kills with the Zealot on the top side. Uh, only gets one Marine kill with the top Zealot this time around, double refinery in the back, no academy yet, but there it is, so academy is being built back at home. Let's jump back and forth a little bit. We have four assimilators coming in from Mong. That's a lot of gas. 
very early. I would even say that three assimilators is already a lot of gas coming in. He's got double robo coming up in the front, which means support base soon in the back. Four cannons to protect that choke point. A couple marines waiting in the front there, waiting for medic and stim to arrive on the scene. Maybe he is not waiting for that. Maybe he's not planning on pressuring. Like this is a form of pressure, but it's like a non-aggressive pressure. It's just standing there, creating the illusion that he might be up to something, which should force Mong to get more cannons as he did. Four cannons should be enough if he combines it with about four zealots, maybe six zealots in total. There's Stim on the way there for Berkusas, who's still no medics, still no medics. Starts a wall on the front, and Deering Bay on the way there in the middle of the base. So only on triple barracks, getting a factory. He needs the factory before barrack number four and five, because he needs to get siege mode on time, because, you know, there's Reavers and Zealots uh, and Shuttles that are planning to perhaps break through the front door, and Reavers... They destroy marines quite easily. You really do need a tank to hit that reaver when it unloads from the shuttle. Starping on the way there from Mong, shuttle speed and weapon level 1 as well, getting a Templus Archive and a second forge, whereas Burgess House is getting a starboard, is just slowly adding onto his base. Oh, Zealots catching the marines on the middle as they retreat from that choke point. Zealots get, I think, about four to five kills, and then they try to make their escape, which they do. Couple Marines on the chase here in the front. I think this just got scanned by Burger Sasu, and again. So yeah, he saw everything. Mong queues up some scarabs, and the solo is leaving the base. Burger Sasu knows it's on the way. Zealots are killing Marines spread about the map to take away that vision and reaction time that Burger Sasu would really like to have. We got two more barracks on the way. Control tower there for the starboard. Shuttle makes his way in just in time before the Marines see it. Finds a really good angle. Actually, I think Burkus has a saw because the Marines are coming in with Stim, ready to take this down. Reavers unload. Reavers try to shoot their load, but they can't quite connect with the SCVs. They're still there. Oh, that's a big, big hit there with the Marine Scarabs, and he makes his way out of there with both Reavers still alive, ready to go for another shot. Flies in, Burger Sasu is caught slipping, not paying attention. Reavers alone, wasn't expecting this one, as if he's running to safety as fast as he can. Reaver got killed by the SCVs. Citizens arrest, as Falcon Paladin would say. Oh, SCVs don't re Ooh, that got me nervous. That got me nervous. The SCVs returning while the Reaver was still alive? That could have been a very bad ending to this game. But. Most of the SCVs do stay alive, but he did lose, I think, at least 10 of them. I think he lost at least 10 of them, so still a painful encounter. Burgess Hasu also lost, I'd say, about 16 or 18 Marines. If all it takes is two shuttle, it's, uh, two Reavers in a shuttle to kill, like, uh, I'd say a thousand minerals worth of defensive units, that's, that, that's worth it. That's a great drop. That's a great, great drop. The drop on the bottom, it's a double shuttle, double trouble, what's inside, double Templar, three Reavers, this might just be the drop that might kill Burger Sasu in this situation, he has a lot of marines and two tanks, this is a very strong drop, it's a loading on the bottom side there of Burger Sasu's base, Reaver gonna get taken down, Templar's ready to storm on the marines, marines running to safety because oh boy, they do not want a piece of that lightning. Take everything down, storm on the tank. Needs one more storm with this high template. Take it down, takes it down. Couple marines running in to kill the reavers. We still have three reavers alive, one inside the shuttle. Everything is going down. He supply block as well, so everything that goes down at this point in time, it will not be replaced. A triple reaver drop of doom. Tank drop happened there inside of Mong's base. Took down, I think, about 20 SC, uh, 20 pros. I think that killed about 20 pro, so he does get a little bit of payback there. But at the moment, Burger Sass is in a terrible shape. Because he has almost no units. And now we got Reavers on the top side as well. No supply depots to replace the lost supply. This might just be one of Mong's cleanest games. Everything is going very, very well. Reavers on the bottom and the top, 
killing the tanks, picking up the reavers before they die, and then again going in for the top side with the double reaver, double shuttle. Three reavers. Oh, flies in. He's gonna try to end it right here. Shuttles from the bottom and from the top. Shuttle from the top unloads. There's literally nothing in the base that can kill this. He's got one tank on the bottom. If it unsieges, this reaver on the bottom will go in. So he's relocating the tank. Gonna try to take down the reavers, but the reavers have shuttles to protect them. Ooh, the scarabs do explode to take everything down. Our units are coming in. Another reaver unloads on the scene. This is trouble. A lot of trouble here for Burgasasu. He will end up defending himself. Barely. Somehow he stayed alive, but lost a lot of units. He's down to 65 supply. Another drop comes in over the front side there. Burgess has to, is not paying attention. He's still, it's Dark Tempest on the scene. He's gonna try to kill everything they can. Maybe Dark Tempest was not the best idea, but Reaver's in the mix as well. Two Reavers on the scene. Oh boy, Reaver, Dark Templar, destruction. Monk is absolutely displaying dominance. This is a dominating performance from Mong's Protoss. I am impressed. Not exactly what I was expecting, but I also was not expecting Burgasasu to still be alive. So Burgasasu, in his own right, does put on a pretty good game, I have to say. Just play a pretty good game. Just play a pretty impressive game. Put a shuttle there from the front. This one might just be the one that ends it all. That's actually just two Dark Templars. Is there to force comsat scans to be used. He splits them up so he can only kill one at a time. Not two at a time. That one goes down, there's one on the top side there as well. Does he have scan energy? Not yet, so a little bit of damage will be dealt. Wraith arrives on the scene, ready to put it on the high ground. Or maybe fly around and hunt for the shuttle. Big drop there prepared by Maw. What's inside of this one? A Dark Templar and a Reaver. Reaver, Reaver. Reaver, Dark Templar, Dark Templar. Reaver, Reaver. Reaver, Reaver. That's six, seven Reavers and three, four Dark Templars? Oh! And all the scans have just been used, although he made a new scan. So he has energy for one single scan. There's no tanks on the bottom to protect this corner. There's one tank just out of range. Arrives on the scene, unload next to the Supply Depot. So supply Depot's gonna get taken down once again. This, he has seven, eight Reavers on the scene, killing everything Dark Templars. Not getting killed because the marines that were going to kill the Dark Templars got murdered. Yeah, 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 yeah. Picks up the Reavers and gets out of there. He just goes in, kills the supply depots, kills the bunkers, and leaves the Dark Templar in the base to just be annoying. And Burgess has a call CG. He's sick of it. He's in pain. He's suffering. He's in agony. He's struggling and writhing with pain. It's visible. He cannot take this any longer. He's supply block yet again. He's low on SCVs. He's got a small army. Dark Templar is killing his stuff. Does he in fact have a scan to kill the Dark Templar? Not yet. Oh yeah, this game was a beautiful display from Mong on how to take down that pesky burger Sasu with a very strong Reaver and Dark Templar focused Protoss against Terran strategy. I like that one. That was a good one. That was a good one. Although I have to admit, I did not really look at Mong's base that much. And that was largely because Mong was just smooth sailing to a victory. And Burgasaz was bleeding out on the ground. He was bleeding out. Quickly. We'd call an ambulance. Would it have been on time? Or would it have been too late? Sometimes, you're just not gonna make it. So now we got game number five. The final fight in this best of series between Mong and Burgasasu. Burgasasu returns to the Protoss, which means Mong is back on the Terran, his main race, his favorite race, and the race I like to see him on the most. Now, what is he gonna do to be victorious here against Burgasasu? Can he pull off the moves, the reads, the tricks, the plays? Can he do it? Both players have both won twice. I think we have one single Protoss win. I mean, one single Terran win from Burger Sasu in game number one. I think in game number two, we had Mong 
achieve victory in game number three and four, which is Protoss wins for both respective players. And Burger Sass was going for a mid gate, proxy mid gate. And I really do not like that. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Let me just say that outright. I do not like it. Why? Well, let me explain it to you. You see, Mong went for barracks, supply depot barracks, and will probably go for a third barracks right now. Rob, no, he's not. Okay, okay. So yeah, the thing with the barracks, supply barracks, is that you get your first marine out and your second marine out about four, 12 to 14 seconds faster. And that just means that this mid-gate Protoss, even though he's making zealots from Triple Gateway, has to fight against a couple more marines than if Burger Sasu was facing against the Mong quick build. So Blood Depot, barracks, barracks, barracks. In which case, all the barracks would have been delayed by around 13 to 14 seconds. Which of course means less marines. Now he's got more marines. He's got a very early academy or very early fire bat. He's got a bunker on the way. Mong, I think he should be fine. Also because Burger Sasu is still scouting the map, Zealots are almost finished up and he's going to send them the wrong way. He's going to send them the wrong way. So he's going to increase the amount of distance he has to travel towards Mong's base. In addition to that, going from the middle to a corner spawn is a little bit longer of a traveling time than going from a middle, or from the exact middle of the map, to a middle spawn location. So yeah, Mong has everything going for him. Everything is looking good. Marines there in the front will meet the Zealots at the probe. It'll turn around, Zealots on the chase. It's, it's a pretty good amount of Zealots. It's two waves of Zealots, six in total. Gonna try to kill the probe. The probe makes it out alive and that might have been a choice that maybe Mong should not have made because he did lose two Marines and his two Marines might just have been enough to leverage his advantage over Burgess whose Zealot count. But we have two medics on the way and still almost finished up. We got firebats in the mix. Firebats in the mix. I repeat, firebats and medics in the mix. And firebats and medics are absolutely cracked against the zealots. Zealots, they do stand a chance. But the chance has been severely reduced, specifically when you split up those zealots in two groups and they get caught out, caught out, overextended, off guard, unprepared, without their brothers to help them fight against the firebats. They do come in now. Firebats there, ready to support. Medics not healing the firebats specifically. Oh, the micro is so good. That micro was really, really good. Very good micro there from Maul. I mean, what do you expect? Professional Terran, he ha he's gonna have amazing bio micro or mech micro. His micro is just gonna be amazing. He's a professional player. Of course, every single micro move is probably going to be on point. Though here he Really turns around, sees the cannon, knows he cannot take the fight. Knows he cannot take the fight. And now Burger Sass is going to have to adjust his game plan because he does have cannons here in the choke point. But with the Zealots, he will not get that deep into Mong's base. So Mong currently is in a good place, getting a command center, getting a second refinery as well. They're on the bottom corner. Zealots are touching and feeling, walking around the edges of Mong's base looking for a way in or maybe for a surround on the marine medic firebat combination. Not gonna work though, but he does manage to pull them away from the backside where the zealots are now going in for a backside attack. Not gonna work. They instead get surrounded, get two marine kills, no SCP kills, actually, no, no kills at all. All the SCP stayed alive, zealots are dead and gone. Burger Sasu is starting to get into a little bit of trouble. Because with these mid-gate build orders, you do have to dish out some pain, some damage, get yourself some advantages going. Because otherwise, the Terran is going to be in a position where it feels like they were not even touched at all. Which is what this looks like. Method number three, probably not going to happen. Getting turrets there on the sides against our Templar. That's a turret, right? Yeah, getting a turret against... Drops and Dark Templars is an interesting position. Usually don't see a turret right there. Getting a turret on the bottom as well. 
I think he's building a turret inside of his um, base because building it all the way out there on the top leaves it exposed to those zealots that are currently protecting this choke point from becoming a defensive choke point for Maul. Right now, it is a counter defensive choke point built by Burkasasi. He's getting two Nexus back at home to try and get a lot of probes very quickly because he will otherwise not be able to keep up with Mong's production. But Mong already has a factory in a tank. Siege mode almost finished up. He's gonna try to break through these cannons on the middle. He's gonna try. He scouted with a Marine. Saw about six cannons around the middle. He's gonna try to push through. He's gonna just have to keep the tank alive against the Zealots. Yeah, Burgess has is in trouble, but not in such amounts of trouble that the game is definitively over. He just has to pull himself up by the bootstraps and make something work. He's getting Dark Templars on the middle, getting Double Robo here back at home. Risky call, but the Double Robo might just be what he needs. Maybe he just needs to get a drop in on the economy and slow Mong down so much that he cannot keep up with Burger Sauce's very rapid economic expansion. Triple Nexus, he's gonna be rich, quick, very, very quick. So the Double Dark Templar are moving on to the sides to try and sneak by and maybe kill some turrets, maybe kill some supply depots, maybe just kill anything that they can. And Mong is noticing, pulling Marines to the bottom, that one on the bottom is going to get taken down, on the top side there, the turret did finish up but he's not responding to that one yet. Tank drop, that's a Wraith. Wraith scouting the map because apparently Mong had not yet found Burgosasu's home base. So more Dark Templars there coming up over the front and they are just staying right outside of vision. I'm gonna try to take down those turrets really quickly. Does he have scan energy there to take them down? Splitting up the Dark Templars to make sure they don't all die, but two of them die and one more is surrounded, scans it, takes it down. Easy peasy. Those Dark Templars are not really doing too much. Not really doing too much. One more, more Dark Templars coming in. Perhaps Burger Sasu is not showing enough respect here. Perhaps this is a really good smart play. He's keeping Mong occupied, stopping him from moving into the middle and taking down those cannons and pushing across the map. Because if he goes right now, he wouldn't have enough scan energy to stop the Dark Templars from stopping him. Push across the map. The map is wide open, but the Dark Templars are keeping Mong locked into his base at the moment. Like, they're not doing much, but they're doing exactly what they gotta do. Keep Mong occupied and keep him locked in his base. It's working. Doesn't look like much, but it's working. Now, if Mong had a science facility and a vessel in the sky, he could push across the map, but he is deciding to play this defensively. And that might just be the right choice because Burger Sasu now does have 66 probes on the Triple Nexus and Mong has 44, getting a lot more gaze at the same time all as well. Dark Templars are still in the middle. I still don't see a science facility on the way there from Mong. He's getting more starboards. I would have really liked to see a science facility and see him just go aggressive. But Mong doesn't exactly know what we know. For all he knows, maybe Burger Sasu went for more gateways, and only a double nexus. Because I don't think Mong has been able to scout the main base with a scan, because he's been using his scans to kill the Dark Templars. So Mong is missing a bunch of information on what Burger Sasu is doing, but Burger Sasu pretty much has been scouting Mong's base the entire time with the Dark Templars, and he should know exactly what Mong is up to. Mong now building a wall there in the front. He's gonna have to clean out those bunkers and turrets at some point. To open up um, space in his base for a nice organized base. Finally the scans come down and he scans... Oh my god, I'm clicking so poorly. He scans the entire base. The front side, the back side, his triple nexus. He's all the technology on the top side. Yeah, now... Burgers... Now Mong knows what to expect. First drop is being built. It's a very slow drop. The Dark Templars cost him a lot of gas. 
did buy him a lot of time, but it also gave Mong a lot of time. Both players are in similar amounts of supply. Mong still behind with his worker count, but he should be catching up very soon. Anytime now. Like, I think Burkasasu's got enough probes. He might make a couple more of them. Burger Sasu does have the tendency to kind of overshoot the mark with how many probes he needs and how many he has. Like, 77 at this point would be perfectly fine. He's got 94 and there's still more probes in production, so we are likely to see him hit at least 97. That's 20 too many probes. So that's gonna hurt his army size and probably hurt his ability to attack. Even more probes on the way, he's gonna go for over a hundred. Sometimes it's hard to pinpoint how many probes you have when you're spending your minerals as quickly as Burger Sasu. Sometimes you feel like you don't have enough money yet and you make a couple more probes. And I think Burger Sasu might be in a situation where he's just adding a couple more probes and over time he just has too many probes. Not just a couple more, but apparently almost 30 too many probes. I think he's gonna stop producing right now. Yeah. Gonna stop. No, is he? no, he's not. Well, he, he's supply block, so he can no longer produce, but he still has a couple of them queued up. And Burgess has will for sure have to throw away at least 24 probes at some point in the future. At least 24. Might even go for 36 of them. In which case, he would have 68. Drop on the bottom. Oh, is the Corsairs on the top? Not the drop. The drop is here on the bottom. Got the raids flying back and forth on both sides of the map, getting spotted by barracks, turns around back home, does not want a piece of the cake called Wraith Destruction. Mon currently on about four starboards, bunkers all over the place. He's really expecting big massive drops. And yeah, big massive drop is, you know, sitting here waiting to go. But it hasn't arrived yet. Berger is really taking his time. And Maul is just using that time that has been given to him to slowly grow bigger, comfortably, get all the upgrades, get all the structures, get his base nicely organized. He is making the best of it. He loves this. But he's also, I'm sure, a little bit nervous. Because a Protoss that is taking this much time to attack, it does make you worry. What does he have in store? Even if you scan, sometimes you miss out on a proxy base. Does Burgess has a proxy base? Mong just doesn't know. He's splitting up the decides to kill these pylons that are being built there in advance for probably cannons, maybe even shield batteries in the further future, further down the line. Carriers and shield batteries, great combination. Our temples are there to kill the marines though. Yeah, just opening up supply space. Hoping to kill some stuff with the marines, doesn't kill much, but at least he opened up supply space, which matters more than the marines themselves. Turrets on the sides, raids flying back and forth, got uh, Valkyries in the mix as well to help take down the shuttle drops, cannons being built on the middle. Burger Sass is just really turning this into a macro game. Getting Arbiter Tribunals, he's got a fleet beacon, getting a carrier capacity, Getting air upgrades for weapon and shield and armor, uh, ground upgrades as well, getting a lot more star ports and star gates, observers, all the speed upgrades, literally every single upgrade that a Protoss needs is building it. Burger Sasu is completely skipping out on the drops for now. He's gonna go for drops later on, but for now he's skipping out on the drops. He's using gateway units to control the sides. He's gonna throw away the gateway units soon when he needs carriers. Still has a large surplus of probes. I said it before, 30 too many. That could be five carriers, it could be 15 zealots. You name it, it could be a lot of different units. But a big drop with hallucinations on the side, ready to fly in. But we have Valkyries somewhere waiting to take it all down. Raised on the top there, killing the cannons. Drop on the bottom, flies in, a lot of hallucinations. He's gonna target the right shuttles? No! The right shuttles all make their way through Burger Sasu with a really, I'd say even lucky drop that really hits the mark. 25 SVs alive, and everything that was on the minerals dead and gone. 
Mong does have some minerals left in the bank, but only triple command center is going to take a little while to rebuild that. It's going to take him like 13 seconds per SCV. Uh, let's, let's say he's just going to make four SCVs per minute per command center, so 12 per minute. It's going to take him four minutes to recover that mount he just lost. That's this is an amazing situation for Burger Sasu. He's got carries on the way, cannons on the middle, cannons on the side for shield batteries, although Mong now coming in to clear that out and kill it. Planning on killing the cannons to stop the shield batteries, but we got the cannons coming up on the top again. Huge baser back at home, so many star gates, nine carriers, two arbiters. The upgrades at the moment, I do not exactly know what his air upgrades are. He does have level 1 shield and armor for ground, level 2 attack, getting mind control as well. Raids flat, finds a hole, it's a big hole, and he flies right on through. He's gonna hope to arrive in the base before the carriers arrive. And there's a wide open spot right here in the top corner with only four cannons to protect the Nexus. He might go for a surgically precise strike to take it all down. Or he might go for the pylons, but the carriers finished just on time, a little bit too late. Gonna try to take all the gateways and the pylons. He wanted to take the pylons down to stop the carriers from warping in. Just a little bit too slow, but a great, great move that he's making here. Being aggressive while having a small economy, recovering still, only 47 SCVs alive, and a big army on the map. A lot of gateways, a lot of um, raids there on the top. He is gonna have a some trouble fighting against the carriers which are building the interceptors he's got all of observers in the mix as well got an arbiter in the back with no stasis yet because no energy yet stasis and recall are both on the way he's getting disruption webs as well he might no no energy there yet goes in to take down the carriers we have an observer on the scene tanks all over the place goliath in the mix valkyrie's joining the party as well mong is flipping the tables on to Burgosasu. Burgosasu is still on 99 probes. Still has to kill at least 20 of them. Mong just has an absolutely massive army with only 50 SCVs. He's got... He's got so... Oh! Oh! Burgosasu stormed a bunch of his own probes. Maybe too many of them? I think he's got two groups of probes still on the gas there. On the minerals, I mean. Killed a lot of probes. He's got 60 probes still alive on the map. But carriers are going to have such a difficult time fighting back. They already took a lot of damage. He's got shield bat. He's got drops. Ooh, he's building proxy robos. Now an army entering the middle. Mong is displaying a strong decision making. Great stasis there on Valkyries. Another great stasis on the raids, which means the carriers can kind of move forward and clear this all out without too much resistance. Mong is going to lose out on a lot of supply, but Burger Sasu still has to stick around and wait right over there for taking care of the mid. Okay, I'm wrong. Dragoons come across the map ready to clear the middle. So There's only about nine carriers, and we have oh, seven carriers. A couple of them did go down. We lost two of them. We got more on the way there. Arbiters and Corsairs on the way to take care of the, or the Wraiths and the Valkyries. Corsairs are winger on the side. Dragoons on the middle to kill the push out of the base. Another big dropship move on the bottom. Flew right on through. Tank their own load to take this all down. More proxy robots on the way for big drops. Undetected, unprotected. On the bottom side, we got tanks being put here on the high ground. Or the low ground even. Because there's a lot of room here. Only Four cannons shooting, gonna take them down very easily. High tempo there, winning the storm. He's got energy for one single storm. Tanks pushing forward without siege. Top side got cleaned out. Top side got cleaned out, which now means the carriers can move to the bottom. Scans, hits the probes, kills them all. Only 39 left alive. Burger Sasu is surprisingly, after hitting that big drop on Mong's economy, I'd say in a pretty bad situation here because the situation looks better for Mong than it does for Burger Sasu. Although Mong is low on gas, although he just added three more gas, so he should be fine on the gas very soon. Burger Sasu is fine at the moment, I'd say. He's rebuilding probes on Triple Nexus. He pulls his probes from the gas onto the minerals as well. He doesn't need a lot of gas at the moment because he already has the carriers. He's got three more carriers on the way, seven still alive. 
pushing into the middle with Goliath tank. Okay, Mong is taking control here. Mong is taking control, but Burgers House is still in a good position. But I do think he gave Mong way too much time to grow and be a resilient, strong Terran. A resilient, strong Terran. Robust. Like a stronghold. He's now moving out with an army. An army so strong, Burger Sasu might just have to yield in the very near future. Now, we don't have a drop there being built on the side. We don't have enough turrets to take it all down. Okay, a big line of turrets. We do have a lot of turrets. We do have a lot of turrets, but no defenses back at home. Just a big, big army of tanks and goliaths. Knock, knock, knocking on that front door, and Burger Sasu does not want to open it. Gonna go for an EMP there on the Arbiters. Misses the Arbiters. He hit the back one, missed the front one. This one's a little energy, but not enough for a stasis. Carrier is flying back and forth, hoping to protect the front side of the base. But there's only six of them. Two of one of them went down just earlier. The lights are on fire. He's entering the base. Burger Sasu. I can I can feel and smell that he's starting to sweat profusely because oh boy, the situation is absolutely a nightmare. A lot of zealots on the way, pulling them to the back. Carriers grouping up, making new interceptors, but it's literally only eight carriers. And we have like 20 goliaths, 20 tanks, rolling into the shop, ready to buy out the house. They're ready to take over. Burger Sasu actually leaves the game. Does not believe in himself anymore. I mean, he's down a supply. It's 200 against 150. Mong ends up winning the best of set with a very strong second half in this final game. Burger Sasu just made a lot of wrong choices. I think that our Templars were ultimately not the right choice. I think the Midgate proxy was not a good choice. All in all, everything combined was just not a great choice. He slowed himself down so much with every single choice made. And everything just worked out against him. Maybe in other situations, in other games, everything would have been the right thing to do. Right here today, Mong comes out victorious. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed watching Mong slowly march to victory. He fell over a couple times, tripped over his own feet. But ultimately, in the end, he got up again and again and kept on marching forward. In the end, came out the winner.